here today to witness the ceremony that will join Tyler Wilson and Allison Walters in the bonds of matrimony. We've gathered as loving supporters of this couple and as participants in a holy event. Who gives this woman to be married to this man? You may be seated. Every wedding is special, and the wonderful memories that are made here today will last a lifetime. One of the great joys of ministry is to join a man and a woman in marriage. This wedding is especially meaningful to me because Allison is my great niece, and she's held a special place in my heart and in this church her whole life. Almost 30 years ago, I was privileged to stand here and perform the wedding of her mother and father. And just a year and a half ago, I married her sister, Robin, to her husband, Brett. Tyler and I have much less history, but we're getting to know each other, and for me, it's been a real pleasure. Between his devotion to ministry and his love for Allison, he and I have a lot in common. So I hope that we have a deep friendship well in the making. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, with the sanctity of this ceremony in our minds, we thank you for your presence here. And we ask that you touch us with your life-changing power. We ask you to honor the covenant now that Tyler and Allison enter into today. May their love for each other, combined with their love for you, form a solid foundation for this marriage. Your word says... Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. So we all ask you now to build this house, build this marriage, build this new family. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to talk to you today about this institution of marriage. The two most important choices that a person will ever make are the choice of a savior and the choice of a spouse. The greatest choice of all, of course, is the choice of the savior. That choice determines if we have peace with God. Because God loves us so much, he gave his son to die for us, to die in our place, to resurrect that we might have eternal life, so that by simply entrusting our souls to him, we can have peace with God and live forever. This, of course, is the greatest choice that anyone will ever make. Second only to the choice of a savior is the choice of a spouse. Marriage is that second choice, and it is the most precious and important relationship that two people can have. It is a complete and a lifelong commitment unlike any other. It was established by God in Genesis chapter 2, when after creating Adam, God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make for him and help meet for him. So God put Adam into a deep sleep, took one of his ribs and made it into a woman. She would be the suitable and appropriate help for him. She would be his counterpart. And although they will contrast in some ways, those ways are meant to complement each other. You see, men and women are designed by God to fit and function perfectly together in every way. That design makes them a stronger and more glorious creation together than either of them could ever have been on their own. And our attention to God's design is what makes marriage work. While Adam was made from dust, Eve was made from Adam's rib. She was formed from his side, a place neither above him nor beneath him, but alongside of him. It's a position of honor. It's a place of assistance and a place of influence. And it is the ultimate place of human companionship. This is the design. It is God's pattern. He established it, and he has never changed it. Jesus sanctioned marriage with his presence and also by performing his first miracle at the wedding of Cana in Galilee. Then in Matthew chapter 10, Jesus reaffirmed that marriage is God's institution by quoting the creation account from Genesis. He said, 
From the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh. The Bible also tells us that marriage is a picture of the relationship between Jesus Christ and his church. He is the groom, and we are the bride. His sacrificial love and devotion are the perfect example for us to follow in our marriage. And for all of these reasons and even more, we see that marriage is a holy institution. It's not to be entered into lightly, but reverently and in accordance with God's intended purpose. The love relationship that Tyler and Allison have has matured to the place that they want to be joined together by God as husband and wife. Going forward, they will abandon their separate lives and live together as one. They will be unselfish in their pursuit of happiness and absolute in their fidelity. As of now, there's a new priority for both of them. That new priority is the new family that they create here today. They've asked the Lord to guide them and to preside over them as long as they live. And as they obey him, they can expect his blessing and they can trust in his word which says, if God be for us, who can be against us? This is what this ceremony is all about. Tyler, as you know, Adam said about Eve, she is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. As your wife, Allison, becomes a part of you, not a possession or just a passion, but a real part of you. Her place is beside you, not behind you, not in front of you, but in that place of honor and of blessing as your wife. Proverbs says, Whosoever findeth a wife findeth a good thing and obtaineth favor from the Lord. And that a virtuous woman is worth far more than rubies. I believe you have found a virtuous woman to be your wife. The Apostle Peter said, Ye husbands dwell with your wives according to knowledge. Marriage is a learning process. We learn as we go. And what we learn can help us grow closer and have a more successful relationship. The Apostle Peter said, Give honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. This commandment levels the playing field because marriage is not a contest where each one strives for control. Marriage is a quest for mutual fulfillment and happiness as a couple. We are to live as being heirs together of the grace of life. So in those times when life gets hard, remember that the two of you have an inheritance of God's grace to see you through every hardship. The Bible says in Ephesians that the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and that the husband is to love his wife as he loves himself and as Christ loves the church. You see, it works like this. When a man is the husband that God commands him to be, well, his wife can enjoy her rightful place at his side, that place of honor. She can gladly submit to his authority because she knows he's going to treat her with the love that Christ treats the church. So Tyler, learn as you go. Honor your wife. Love her like Christ loves the church. In other words, be a good husband. Allie, you enter the marriage today having grown up in a Christian home and in a Bible-believing church. You gave your heart to Christ at an early age. All of those things are a real advantage that you bring to this marriage as you pursue fulfilling your place as a loving and faithful wife. Now, your love for Tyler and your devotion to God can contribute greatly to this marriage. Proverbs says, A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. The Bible then describes that virtuous woman in the beauty of her works and her dedication to her husband and her household. It says she fears the Lord and that she's faithful. She's wise and kind. It says that young women are to learn to love their husbands. Here again we see that marriage is a learning process. So Allie, learn as you go. Be a virtuous woman. 
love your husband, be a crown to him. In other words, be a good wife. Those commandments are God's formula for a successful marriage. The one commandment that's common to the both of you is to love the other. Love's the key. God is love. 1 Corinthians 13 tells us this about love. Its character traits are these. Love never fails. No, love suffers long and is kind. It doesn't envy or get puffed up. Love doesn't behave itself unseemly. It doesn't seek its own. Love is not easily provoked, and it thinks no evil. Love rejoices in truth. It bears all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Truly, love never fails. So love God and love each other. You know, as wonderful as this event is today, it's made more precious and holy by the overshadowing presence of the Lord our God. In the prayers that we pray, in the vows that are taken, and now in the sacred act of communion, we worship the Savior who died for us. after me. I, Tyler, take you, Allison. I, Tyler, take you, Allison. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To be my lawfully wedded wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. To love and to honor. To love and to honor. To cherish and protect. To cherish and protect. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or for poorer. In sickness as in health. In sickness as in health. From this day forward. From this day forward. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. Allison, repeat after me. I, Allison, take you, Tyler. I, Allison, take you, Tyler. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To be my lawfully wedded husband. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. To love and to honor. To love and to honor. To cherish and obey. To cherish and obey. For better or worse. For better or worse. For richer or poorer. For richer or poorer. In sickness as in health. From this day forward, from this day forward. Till, death do us part. till death do us part. For thousands of years, men have sealed covenants with a token. The most common token for the covenant of marriage is a ring. The circular nature of a ring symbolizes the unending love and commitment that this couple makes to each other today. Tyler, do you have a token that will seal this covenant? Allison, will you accept this as a symbol of his unending love? I will. Place it on the fourth finger of her left hand and repeat after me. With this ring I thee wed. With this ring I thee wed. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I pledge myself to you. I pledge myself to you. 
pledge myself to you. Allie, do you have a token to seal this covenant with Tyler? And Tyler, will you accept this as a symbol of her unending love? Allie, repeat after me. With this ring, I thee wed. With this ring, I thee wed. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I pledge myself to you. I pledge myself to you. These two have now given themselves to each other by solemn vows before God. They have exchanged rings as a token of unending fidelity. The Lord now joins them together so that they are no longer two but one. What therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Shall we pray? Lord Jesus, thank you for this precious couple and for the family and the friends who stand with them today. Thank you for your word, which tells us that if we ask anything according to your will, you will do it. Marriage between a man and a woman is your will. It is of your own design. So I ask you, Lord, sanction and bless this marriage. Keep Tyler and Allison safe in body, soul, and spirit. Let nothing and no one come between them. And I pray, I pray that you give them such peace, joy, health, and unity that all who see it will say, surely this is the Lord's doing. I ask this in your name. Amen. Tyler Wilson and Allison Walters, as you stand here today, by the power vested in me, by the Lord Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife, and you may kiss your bride. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mr. and Mrs. Tyler Wilson.